Bruchim Aboim. Last week we discussed uh, the idea of uh, blessings, and we got into the concept of uh, thanking God, thanking people. So I'd like to continue a little bit because I think there's quite a bit more to be said, and, and I think it's important to uh, explain a little more. In the standing prayer that we say, the, called the Shmon Esrei, there is a at the end there's something called the Modim. We bow, Modim Anachnulok. We thank you. And it's interesting that in that prayer it says, No delacha unusaper tehilasacha. That we thank you and we also relate your praises. The reason why I think this is so important, when it comes to complaining, everyone has their issues with God. And it's funny because we talk about God judging us. The truth is we judge God a whole lot more than he judges us. And uh, But when it comes to thanking God, many times people do thank God, but they thank God privately. When it comes to complaining, they tell everyone. It's kind of like I'm in the restaurant business. You know, you're only as good as your last sandwich, people. If you, if you, if you, if you mess up one order, they tell 12 people. There's a thing about losing $100,000 by the time you lose one customer. When you treat them well, they tell no one. And if it bets one person. So it's kind of the same with God. So the, the verse tells us not only to thank God, but also to tell people. It's very important. If things are going well for you and you see the hand of God and something very special has happened, not only are you supposed to thank God, but you also have an obligation to tell others. And that'll go together with what we call the Korban Toda, which we'll continue with a little bit later in the lecture, hopefully, of the sacrifice of thanks to God. But we know that in that prayer, it talks about the goodness that happens, miracles that God does every day. But also it talks about your wonders and your goodness. You do evening, morning, and afternoon. So there are two things. Number one is there's certain things that we see and that we thank God for. But one should know that God is constantly like a parent looking over us. And there are many things that happen we're not even aware of. Not only that, that there are certain things that God orchestrates that we might see as almost negatives and that are really positives and God is trying to bring us closer through them. I tell a story of uh, Roy Manus Friedman who gave a lecture in uh, California. And after the lecture, one of the people came over to him and uh, with great enthusiasm told him how he'd become a Balchuva, how he had come back to serving God, become religious. And he told him the story that he was driving on the ocean highway along the coast, and he lost control of his car. And he jumped over the embankment and wound up going off the cliff. And his car landed on guide wires. And um, he walked away without a scratch. And he looked at the rabbi and he said, after that, I became a Baal Tshuva. After that, I became a religious Jew. And the rabbi kind of smiled and looked at him and said, so let me get this straight. So your car went off the cliff. and then, because you didn't have, weren't harmed at all, you thank God for saving you. And that's how you became a Baal Shuvah. And the man said, that's correct. And he kind of chuckled. He said, did you ever think who threw you off the cliff? So God works in both ways of trying to bring us closer. So really, we have to thank God, even when we don't know what's going on, that every day, as things move on, we need to know that God's always there watching over us, like a very concerned parent. In fact, the word Yiras Hashem that we use all the time of fear of heaven, which we say that we're supposed to be in fear or in awe of heaven, I really like the terminology that it's God's concern for us. Yiras Hashemayim means that God, like a parent, worries about us all the time. And that's what true Yiras Hashemayim is. So in the Shemona Esrei that we say, it's interesting that the first three prayers and the last three are Always the same no matter what, whether it's during the week, whether it's on a Shabbat or a, or a holiday. It's always the same. The first three are, are verses of praise, and the last three are verses of thank you. Much like if you would go to a king, first you would praise him, then you would make a request, and then you would uh, praise him, thank him as you were leaving. So the Shemona Esrei, the standing prayer, is set up the same way. And the the law of it is that you cannot make any requests in the first three blessings or the last three. Now, during the holidays and Shabbat, we don't make requests, so it's the theme of the day. But during the weekdays, there are 13 requests. We ask for health and for, for, for livelihood and for being forgiven, all types of things. 
wisdom. But what's interesting is that even though we can't make any requests in the last three, thanking God is much more, di much more different than thanking a person. Because even though I just said that we can't make any requests in the first three or the last three, in the last three where we're not supposed to make any request, we begin with the request to bring back the temple and the service with it. Then we thank God in the modem. And then Sim Shalom, we ask God to bring back peace and all types of requests to treat the, the nation of Israel well, to give them peace and, and serenity. But I said you can't make any requests, so how can we make requests? And the answer is our relationship with God is different than with people. If you have someone who you've had to go to for assistance, and he's helped you in a very kind way again and again and again, the greatest news he can hear from you is you coming to him and saying, I want to thank you for all the good that you've done and being so gracious. And I want you to know that I don't need you anymore. I can stand on my own two feet. He's happy you're happy. But not with God. The greatest way to say thank you to God is to say to God Almighty, I want to thank you for all you've done for me. And without you, I could not have made it to where I am today. And what I want you to know is that now that I'm here and I'm stronger than I've ever been, I now realize I even need you more. And that's the way we thank God. Because God, much like a benevolent parent, wants to be relevant. It's one of the reasons why in the desert, when the Jews wandered for 40 years, the heavenly food, the man that fell every day, fell every day, it could have fallen once in, for the whole period of the 40 years, once a year, once a month, once a week. Yet it fell every day. Because God wanted his children to come to him every day and look up to heaven and have that relationship. I was jokingly say, if you send a kid away to college, you put enough money in his bank account for a year, you won't see him until his laundry runs out. Put enough for a month, you'll see him every month. For a week, you'll see him every week. For a day, you'll see him every day. And this becomes the key, that God wants to be relevant. And the way we say thank you is by making him relevant. Now, it's important not just to thank God, but to thank everyone. Even someone that's being paid to do something for you. Because the fact he's being paid, we see that with Moshe Rabbeinu, that even after um, the, he would not hit the water with the plagues or hit the earth because it had done him a favor when his, when his cradle was put in the Nile when he was three months old. Or when he hit the Egyptians, some say he was 13, some say he was 30. So the question becomes, how long do you have to thank someone? And the answer we see from Moshe, Moshe was 80 years old when he, brought, when he came to Egypt to bring the plagues on the Egyptians. 80 years later, he wouldn't hit the water. So once you're indebted to someone for doing you a favor, it's forever. But what's interesting is, what did the water and what did the earth do for him? And the answer is what water does and what earth does. Nothing special. If you put something on top of water that's lighter than water, it will float. Water did not go out of its way. It did not change its nature. It just did what it's supposed to do. And yet, Moshe wouldn't hit it. So the fact that someone does you something and you pay them doesn't mean that you don't say thank you. It's very important. And not only that, you, you develop a good relationship with someone. I don't care who you are and what you do. Everyone will do things a little bit better if you say thank you, but say it graciously. And again, the importance of being a Jew, this idea of Yehuda, saying thank you. And, you know, not only that, we see from Yisro, Yisro was the first person who said, Baruch Hashem, blessed is God. But the reason why he, what he did was so unique, he didn't thank God for what happened to him after he heard all the good that had happened to the Jews. He said, Baruch Hashem for someone else. And this becomes the true idea of graciousness, of saying thank you. Not just to be grateful for what happens to you, but to be grateful for what happens to someone else at the same time and thank God for the good that has has. God has brought upon someone else and not being jealous of that. There was a man who went to a rabbi for a concern that someone else had opened up a business like his in the neighborhood. And he wanted the rabbi to intervene. And the rabbi he said to him, do you know why when a horse goes to water to drink, first thing it does is it puts his hoof into the water? The man said no. And the rabbi explained to him, when the, when the horse looks into the water, what he sees is another horse. He chases it away, then he drinks. God can take care of both of your livelihoods. You don't have to chase the other person away. What you need to do is pray for his success. 
And by doing so, you too will be successful. And it's a great lesson that we should always know that enough, God can take care of all the needs of all people. But getting to this concept of modim, of thanking, that the uh, Gemara tells us that when Messiah will come, Mashiach, most sacrifices will no longer, no longer be brought. But the Korban Toda, the thank you sacrifice, will be brought. That which we thank God for, for anything special that happens to us. And it's interesting that the sacrifice, which is also in a broader sense called a shlomim, a peace offering. The reason why the peace offering was called a peace offering, because everybody got a piece of it. That the, that the inner um, organs and blood were brought to God, the chest and the foreleg were given to the priests, and the man was able to eat the rest of the sacrifice in Jerusalem, within the walls of Jerusalem, for two days and one night. And that was the time frame. And it was a peace offering for that reason. But the Korban Toda, which is, again, is somewhat of a peace offering, was very unique in that it was only able to be eaten for that day and that night. And that's it. It was not given the next morning, the next day, until, until sunset to be eaten. And not only that, it was accompanied with 40 loaves of bread. 30 that were matzah and 10 that were chametz, made with leaven. And why the 40 breads? And there was a, it was an ox that was brought. And the answer is because the Corbin Toda was brought for some event that happened to you where you were saved. If you had a grave illness and you were saved, you went across the desert in those days, very perilous, across the sea, again, very perilous, released from prison. And you would bring this sacrifice. Why would you bring it? To tell people how grateful you were to God. Well, guess what? If you have an ox and 36 loaves of bread, four were given to the priest, you have a, a lot of bread and a lot of meat. So what you do is you make a party. And when you make a party, who do you invite? Your friends and everyone else, because you, you can only eat it that day and that night. That's it. And what, when everybody's there, they say, well, what's this all about? Well, now you have to tell them exactly why you're bringing the sacrifice. To tell them that God had done something very special to you. And again, this, this necessity of letting people know. We're so, we're, we're so embarrassed, you know, of, of thanking God. If you watch the, uh, a fight you know, a, a, a fist fight that they have on television of prize fighting. It's, the, guy want, the, the announcer wants to interview the winner, and he's got blood coming from his face, and he's been beat up, but he still won. And before he'll say anything, he first wants to thank God. It's amazing. And we're embarrassed to do so. The truth of the matter is that a person should say, thank God, in everything and anything that he says. You know, am I... On my uh, emails, the last thing that's written that's put in is God bless. I never end a sentence with anyone, a discussion with anyone, without the words God bless. I'd say Baruch Hashem, they wouldn't know what I'm talking about, so it would really be just water under the bridge. So I say God bless to everyone. Because we need to bless God, we need to thank God, we need to let everyone know how great God is. And we need to remember that. Because when someone does you favors all the time, there's a tendency to forget that that person has done you favors. You get used to it. So what we need to do is, a, is, a, is adopt that sort of mindset of always remember that every step that we take, every move that we make, everything that happens in our lives, nothing is an accident. Everything that is given to us, every success that we have, is given to us by a benevolent God. And we need to continue to say thank you and say it enough times that he continues to shower blessings upon us so we can have that all the days of our lives and spread it to others. Thank you again for coming, and God bless, and have a good Shabbos.